Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. They have even said it, that, you know, we made up the war on drugs yeah. to target black people. Being comfortable, you don't ever learn anything. True, you gotta get out of that comfort zone. You have to be yes. so uncomfortable. You have to be squirming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's when you're learning. Yeah, hey. and that's just. <laughs> Hello, bars, little bars. Real Talk Session Series The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn, the founder and creative director of the Real Talk Session Series, and we are back with another amazing episode. Today, we're at One A Smoothie in Woodbridge, New Jersey, and this episode is something that I've really been looking forward to. Um, I made it a point this season to really push the envelope and to talk about things that aren't in the media at all. So I have the pleasure of being with a phenomenal woman, a.k.a. The Boss. Miss Jade of RX, Mary Jade, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yes, and that's that's a great name too. I love it. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, yeah, that's a dope name. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. So, right now in this world, um, cannabis, more so, I'm gonna say a plant, mm -hmm. has been outlawed for many years since the 1930s, mm -hmm. and your company is here, um, RX, Mary Jade. So. Can you just tell us how you got into the field of cannabis education? Uh, I had always been a cannabis uh, user since the time I was 15 years old. I was using it recreationally, you know, uh -huh. behind the high school, I admit it. Um, <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, as I got older, I had, you know, realized I was like, I want to lose weight. I want to make some lifestyle changes. Mm. Um, so I stopped uh, consuming cannabis in my early 20s. Um, and I started having a lot of health issues. Yeah. Uh, the doctors couldn't really figure it out. It was GI issues, tremors. Uh, I started incorporating the cannabis the, with the THC mm -hmm. back in, and the GI issues really subsided. Right. Um, and real quick, can you break down what THC means? Because like people don't really know different terms. So THC, what does that mean okay. for people? Uh, well, CBD is cannabidiol, and that is the non-intoxicating portion that everybody keeps hearing about, and you see at 7-Elevens, and you see everywhere. Yeah. Um, and THC is tetrahydrocannabinol. Mm. And say it again. <laughs> tetrahydrocannabinol. See, I can't say that and at all, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. And um, that's actually the euphoric okay. uh, molecule, if you will of the cannabis plant so that is the intoxicating molecule okay cool right? so yeah i got your little education right there there you go right. <laughs> <laughs> so once i started incorporating the thc back in the gi issues the gastro issues they really subsided so that mm. i had success with that but my anxiety my tremors i was having hair loss you know everything like that um it just wasn't cutting it and mm. i was taking xanax for t the longest time Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you. I probably was 16 when I started taking Xanax. Yeah. Um, once I incorporated it in CBD, I heard about Charlotte's Web, and it was a little girl, mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte Figgy, who was having all these seizures a day, and the Stanley brothers had the strain. They tried it for her, and she stopped having the as many um, seizures. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, give it a go. I tried that, and it changed my life. I stopped taking Xanax. Um, mm -hmm. I actually ended up flying over to Denver with my then boyfriend um, and I tried a THC and CBD one-to-one -one ratio, Mary's medicinal patch, and I had been having difficulty walking for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, no more than like 10 minutes at a time without any pain. And that day I walked five miles. Wow. So I came back to New Jersey. I was like, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I got a job at Breakwater Dispensary in Cranberry okay. um, as a trimmer. I also worked in the front as a bud tender and a health coach and a receptionist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just saw that once I became a patient, I was in the program. I'm like, there are tons of gaps. Yeah. So, yeah. I and that's what I'm learning when I'm doing more research on my own. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, even people don't even realize that there is even a medical program. Mm -hmm. Like, a, a gentleman here, we have a dispensary. We have Garden State Dispensary here in Woodbridge. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman in the store down the street was like, we have a dispensary? <laughs> yeah. like, yes, it's been here. You don't ever smell that? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, so my whole goal is just to really educate people and then safe, clean access. Like, okay. people just really have no clue. Um, 
<laughs> or purchasing things off of the street or mm. just don't just don't know and they just only have one experience go oh that makes me really hungry yeah. oh i got paranoid from that oh that gives me panic attacks i don't i don't use cannabis and i'm mm. like well what about cbd yeah. so that's kind of where i came into play i just started doing events and just uh -huh. really took off from there so i really think that you know we've been trained not to really trust cannabis it's always seen as a bad drug dare the war on drugs aka the war on black and brown people mm -hmm. so for you with your work when did you start your work with rx mary jade and then i guess what was really your driving force to even starting that and still sustaining it to today okay uh well i started it as just a social media account instagram uh back in 2017 mm -hmm. And from there, I just was, I just started documenting, you know, okay, I'm going to the doctor or yeah. this is what I've purchased or just, you know, complaining about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about what I had. Um, and it really kind of took off from there mm. and more and more people called for the, that type of advocacy. Like, Hey, could you tell me how you got your CBD? Where did yeah. it come from? And once I saw that people started asking me questions, Oh, where can I find a doctor? That kind of thing. Yeah. It was like you were that person. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just like, you know, there's no, there's no way around this. I just have to do, I just have to do this. I just have to help the people. I've always been a person who helps people. That's just yeah. in my blood. That's just my shaman nature. That's yeah. why even I have my product called Shaman Sav. Okay, all right, <laughs> I get that. <laughs> uh, just because I truly believe in that, you know, I've always been an outsider. I've mm -hmm. always done things that have a stigma to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know... I'll be a hermit. I'll be by myself. I don't yeah. care. But if somebody needs me, I come out of the shadows and I help them. Okay. And that's kind of what I've been doing is just coming up and empowering myself and showing people that they can empower themselves too. Yeah. Um, and just from that, it just it became a whole educational driving force. So 2018 mm. really took off. Uh, I went to the Women Grow Leadership Summit. I met a, a bunch of wonderful women there. Mm. Uh, I met with uh, Annie Nelson from uh, uh, Willie Nelson's new product line. It's actually his wife. Okay, and nice. so they have their own product line and everything. And I just met with, like, it was a little conflict of things going on down there, but mm. it was just, like, it was nice to hear what the cannabis industry actually is and then, then from there just kind of see how I fit into it. And yeah. um, just been kind of taking off from there and... and Carving my path and making the way. Okay. Ride the wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, and I, I definitely commend you, and that's definitely admirable that you really came out of you know your shell to help other people, and to really make it a cause to really make a positive change. Because for me, I was a late bloomer. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe about like two years ago, that's when I started. But um, it was more so for my anxiety. I am legal, so don't play around with me. All right, we good. <laughs> so I'm a legal patient. <laughs> yes. So, um, and it's really helped me out. And a lot of people don't really know the benefits. And as I'm learning more, like my majority, how I learn, Vice Land, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Like they have a lot of quality programming that is educational, but also entertaining. And that's mm -hmm. how I really learned. And especially when it comes to CBD usage, mm -hmm. um, can you just break down like what are some of the, I guess, the medical benefits of CBD? Because I think that's that would be a good option for people who aren't aware, especially older people who are taking like these opioids or other, other painkillers and whatnot, so. Mm -hmm. uh, no, definitely. Uh, CBD can be used for a variety mm -hmm. of uh, ailments. Uh, so like I had mentioned, uh, the first time I ever heard about it was in regards to uh, seizures. So mm -hmm. anti-epileptic, anti-epileptic, <laughs> <laughs> I need some CBD, <laughs> um, as well as anti-anxiety, because okay. that's why I started taking it. You that's know, exactly what I do to anxiety. Yeah, it's crazy. Five years Xanax free, so I'm not, I'm not even trying to play with that. Yeah. Um, it also can help with skin conditions. That's one thing okay. that people yes. don't realize is that it can actually um, help with the skin conditions as well. Mm. So if you have any uh, sort of dermatitis or eczema or anything like that, a psoriasis, mm -hmm. you can actually apply the topical to the skin or, you know, um, the local area. Yeah. And it'll, it can actually help with that condition. Internally, you're seeing things like uh, decrease in high blood pressure medication mm -hmm. because now your body is creating a natural state of homeostasis yeah. and you can you have that environment so that your body can thrive. Okay. So sometimes people find that they actually need 
less of their medication yeah. uh, going on. So that's why it's really important. I'm just gonna make the disclaimer, like don't just jump into CBD just because somebody said it's safe. Mm -hmm. um, if Do your you, own research. Yeah, if, if, yeah, if you take medicine, um, CBD can interact with your medicine. It can, um, it uses the same pathways mm. as other medications. So like anything, if you sometimes may see, you know, avoid taking with grapefruit mm -hmm. on a, a label, uh -huh. that would be something that you would want to not take your CBD with. You were going to either want to take it an hour, I say like an hour and a half prior uh -huh. or an hour and a half afterwards. Cause you mm -hmm. want to give that medicine a chance to work through that pathway mm -hmm. and then give that CBD its chance to work through that pathway as well. Okay, dope. So yeah. There's a whole yeah. bunch of stuff I could tell you. <laughs> yeah, and like, and one thing like I appreciate you talking about was the topicals because most of the time when people even think about cannabis or CBD, they think about like a joint or a blunt. Mm -hmm. But like, what are some of the other options to like deliver the medication? Okay, uh, that's a real good question. So, what people don't actually ever think of when they think of CBD mm -hmm. is the flower. Like when yeah. you think of THC, or, you know, people say weed, whatever uh -huh. like that. <laughs> um, you you think of the actual buds, the mm -hmm. flowers. But now since hemp has become a thing yes it's you can smoke it mm -hmm. you can uh, have it use a dry herb vaporizer with the uh, hemp flour so okay. that's a you know a nice high quality cbd um mental stimulation mm -hmm. um like i said the topicals transdermal patches uh yeah. there's a couple of companies that have transdermal patches that you'll feel the effects of the cbd for up to 96 hours wow yeah there's uh -huh. gels, um, all sorts of sublinguals. So everybody's mm -hmm. really seeing the tinctures now. Yeah. Um, usually when you hear about a tincture, it's technically uh, in herbal medicine, uh, alcohol based. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing are the MCT oils, the coconut oils, the olive oils. And that's what you just put a couple of drops underneath your tongue, yeah. hold it there and swallow. Or okay. people like the gummies, yeah. brownies. You can put it in anything. Like really CBD is... <laughs> there's a variety of applications you know mm -hmm. whatever you can dream of you can put cbd in for the most part thank you for breaking down all like of the different varieties of cbd and way it comes so um can you briefly go into the history of why we even have this issue with cannabis because i came up in the era of the this is your brain on drugs the egg in the frying pan mm -hmm. <laughs> the most dumb but it works stuff it works <laughs> yes it works and that shows how gullible we are as a people like there was no way for us to go on Google to do our own research, mm -hmm. but we're fed by the media. We're fed by whatever the government says, whatever school says. Mm -hmm. So can you just break down the history of why this goes on? I know it's a racist history, but you know, see, and that's the thing is you, you will have people tell you that there are no racial implications in regards to the, you know, the legal status of cannabis. Mm -hmm. And for that, I have to say that, Unless you have brown skin, it's really hard to see past that because yes. it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. And and maybe it wasn't in complete uh, reason because it wasn't. Mm -hmm. There was uh, the, oh, sorry, I'm blanking on the name. But there were numerous companies who have invested stocks yeah. in paper, mm. trees, petroleum, all those types of fuels, all mm. these types of resources, and all you needed was hemp to come in. Hemp can build your house, hemp can clothe you, yep. and hemp can be the fuel in your car. Mm -hmm. So once hemp came in, that became a real threat to their money. Yeah. And so that also, that was definitely an attack to the cannabis plant. Mm -hmm. um, but in regards to the racial implications, it is definitely definitely most certainly real i don't want anybody to ever think that it's in their head it's mm -hmm. not it's a real thing it's a real thing um they have even said it that you know we made up the war on drugs yeah to target black people mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it, sure. it has been said you can google it mm -hmm. um but it, it became a thing where there was a lot of uh, Mexican immigrants coming over. And it, the U.S. had regularly used cannabis as medicine prior yeah. to any of that. So once the, the, the Mexican immigrants started coming over mm -hmm. um, and they started smoking it in a recreational fashion, yeah. that's the problem. That's where the problem came. Um, and that's when the uses of the word marijuana Wana came, came into the term. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And then you'll see the movie Reefer Madness. And after mm. Reefer Madness came out, it was a done deal. Mm. They're already, they're taking it out of the medical text you're not allowing it um, it still wasn't a uh, criminalized thing such as like how we now have today where it was a, a schedule one yeah uh, drug but that did come later down 
the line with the uh, Controlled Substances Act. So then mm. it became a Schedule One drug. So that it was definitely it had no medical implications, mm. and it was basically heroin was what they were saying to us, um, which always, <laughs> which yeah. always. Yeah. And if you ever notice, it's called dope. Yeah. The, and and th that's the thing. I like how we were saying people are gullible. People are gullible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gullible. <laughs> people are gullible, but uh. they really are. And all, all it does is it misdirection. Mm -hmm. It's all misdirection. All of this was misdirection. Yes. And if you can find a scapegoat, which is a skin color, mm -hmm. then you can make it happen. And that was the thing. They just really used fear. Um, and then it became just money after a point because then you had big tobacco in the picture. And you still do now with this yeah. vape crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the can we talk crisis. about the vape crisis? Yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> so can we actually break that down? Because I think that a lot of people don't really understand it fully. It goes back to them seeing it in the media and just soaking it in without questioning what's going on. So yeah. can you really break down the vape crisis and, like, why is this a thing? Okay. So <laughs> there has always been kind of this outside. So when we say vape, mm -hmm. we're referring to e-juice. We're referring to the actual cannabis oil cartridges. Yeah. All those things. Dry herb vaporizers are not part of the vape crisis. Dry herb vaporizers are not part of the vape crisis. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put a little effect on that too. <laughs> it all has to do with the things that they're cutting it with, what they're actually making the cartridges from, mm. and that kind of thing. And then also um, from the tobacco e-juice uh, side of things, such as um, the story of a father who was purchasing jewel cartridges for his teenage son mm. to consume, and now he's sick because of all the nicotine. Um, so that you have a variety of of people, uh, I mean, to big tobacco, um, coming at <laughs> <laughs> coming at this with the vape crisis. So it became a definite way to try to hinder the cannabis community yeah. by using the um, the jewel, the e juice. Oh, they're flavored. That's how you're getting kids to. Mm. Um, purchase this when you always see Smirnoff has a whipped cream flavored yeah. um, vodka, but you know, it's, we won't get into that. Yeah. But <laughs> Whatever makes the money, you know? <laughs> exactly. So it turned into a thing. Oh, what about the children? So then people started getting scared of that. And then, but uh, on the real side of the, the cannabis uh, scare would be for the off market, you know, the traditional market, if you will, black market as some yeah. call it. Um, people cutting cartridges with mm. unknown substances with vitamin e acetate mm. um with anything really because mm. you can purchase the packaging off of amazon and fill it up and just make it look like it's a cartridge and if you're purchasing this off of the street you have no clue and if you're not yep. a seasoned person you have no clue and then now you also are somebody who perhaps doesn't have their medical card yeah. and you don't have access to it uh you know to go to like such as like a breakwater dispensary and purchase mm. a cartridge and know that it's clean medicine um it, it it's that's the problem it's an it's an overlap of you know big tobacco trying to come at cannabis yeah. and then also just snake oil literal snake oil being put into these cartridges and actually um causing health issues causing mm. pneumonia causing all sorts of things so what are you seeing right now, I guess, when it comes to the fight of, I guess, regulating um, the cartridges and whatnot? Because I think that, you know, without regulation, you know, you can't really have a set staple, okay, this is good, you know, and there wouldn't be a, a whole attack on it if there wasn't a regulation. So, like, what do you really see, like, what's going on with that right now in terms of, like, with the vapes? Are they really concerned about getting them out of here or is this a matter of they're really going to have to do more research mm -hmm. um there's going to be a lot more batch testing mm -hmm. and and just in regards to the cartridges themselves like if you're getting a cheap one that's not like a c cell or anything like that um i'm hoping ceramic cartridges are going to be mm -hmm. the next wave i've seen some folks using that already with live uh rosin or resin in the cartridges mm. um and that's going to be the cleanest method so that you're not getting any heavy metals because when you're heating up metal or you're heating up plastic some chemicals are gonna come off of yeah. That. yeah yeah that's the same thing that's the reason why they changed all the water bottles with the bpa and all of that stuff because the leaching yeah and, you know leaching is inevitable but something like ceramic you mm. know that 
that at least remove that unhealthy component from it, you know? You being a woman of color and the cannabis industry, you know, I think that, you know, it's very crucial that we're here. We're very uh, underrepresented currently, even though we were the, one of the ones that really pioneer and make uh, cannabis into an industry that was profitable. We've already done it in a big way already on, on the underground, but now everything has to be legal. So what are some programs that um, can help people of color, women, and also veterans to get into the cannabis industry? Uh, that's a good question. Um, really, what I always try to tell people is you got to create your own wave. It, it's, a, it's a little difficult just for anyone, not even a person of color or a woman or a veteran to get into um, the cannabis space because it, it seems to be sometimes very elitist that they only want um, individuals who've had some type of uh, prior cannabis experience, which is hard because yeah. if you're in New Jersey and you've had prior cannabis experience, it's usually not legally. So mm -hmm. you're usually coming from out of state and that kind of thing. So that kind of takes yeah. it away from the New Jersey residents, you know. You're feeling kind of, uh, almost said almost said bad word. <laughs> <laughs> kind of out of luck. <laughs> they feel a little like they're you know just been passed over uh, because of that. Mm -hmm. So what I actually suggest is for more individuals to get out to networking events okay. um, in general, um, but also join organizations such as Normal. Uh, Charlotta McKeithen, she is now mm -hmm. the deputy director. She used to be with uh, Minorities for Medical Marijuana. Okay. But, you know, it's it's about getting individuals out there into these types of organizations. You know, going to your small business in, uh, association and taking business classes there. People such as Jessica Gonzalez, she does wonderful work with her law firm in regards to helping empower individuals with the information that they actually need to apply nice. for their, you know, RFAs, for their actual, uh, you know, applications to mm. be anywhere, any part of this uh, community or actually I should say industry right? yeah. Yeah. it's community also, also yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that joining an organization going out to networking events um, and and checking in with colleges because mm. colleges now are offering cannabis uh, education See, I never knew that. That's, that's, that's yeah. definitely a good so, thing. Uh, you know, especially like Stockton University, they have their SMART program, which is their student alliance, which is actually their students for, you know, mm. uh, cannabis reform and education and that sort of thing. Okay. So they, they do have um, classes for it as well. Um, so it's just about educating yourself. It's about infiltrating. Yes. Because keeping yourself separate, you know, empowering your people is great, but we need to infiltrate. I would go on Eventbrite and okay. look for local cannabis business meetings, um, you know, cannabis business industry associations mm. or other alliances that might be out there that are local to you. And just really getting on social media, too, and trying to yeah. find other people that are. And that's exactly how I found it. you. Yeah, you know, exactly. Just using it as a tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's about have a have a realistic dream like the sky is the limit but have a realistic dream when you come into the cannabis uh, industry mm. you know not everybody can afford a dispensary and plant touching isn't where all the money is yeah. so be ready to think outside the box be ready to take your current skill set and apply it to cannabis and just be ready to get your hands dirty and just really start you know pounding the pavement and looking for getting where you fit in yeah. And there, there will always be a space for you. And especially now because they are incorporating more women and people of color and veterans are now being uh, entered into, especially all these positions now at the dispensary. I'm really happy when I get to see veterans work there, especially like in nice. security positions yeah. too. Like you already, like mm -hmm. you have the they, background. They got it, yep. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they got it. So you definitely have the opportunities. So just because, you know, you've never had the actual experience, don't think that mm -hmm. you can't get in. Now, I'm also big on having people tell their stories and revealing the lessons within, like, the struggle of coming up to where you're at right now. If you were able to talk to younger Jade to give her some advice, what would that advice look like <laughs> when getting into the cannabis, cannabis industry? Um, don't reveal the secret sauce. Don't reveal yeah. the recipe. Don't let them have your secret recipe, you know. It's okay to want to help people and give your ideas, but... That's a piece of you. 
And um, I have been a licensed massage therapist for 14 years outside of this mm -hmm. uh, cannabis space. And I had always said, every time you massage a person, I do a medical massage, that you do. You lose a piece of you. you mm -hmm. Your hands hurt a little. You've gained a little bit. You've used up your energy. You know, yeah. you've healed. And um, you do. And it's the same thing in this space. Because depending on your intention, it is truly healing work. Mm -hmm. whether you're actually working directly with the patient or not is all in the intention so always make sure they put their money where their mouth is yeah. always make sure you're compensated never let anyone let you think that you are less than what you are and always stand up for yourself and advocating for yourself is yeah, crucial yeah smile at fear Yes. Smile at fear. That's always. I wish I would have known. I like that one. That's, that's a good one. That's yeah. Good one. Pima Chodron. She's a, a Buddhist nun. She. Um, that was one of the first times I ever heard of her. It was a book, and it's called Smile at Fear. Mm. And when I read that, that changed everything. It just realized. It made me realize that being comfortable, you don't ever learn anything. True. You got to get out that comfort zone. You have to be yes. so uncomfortable. You have to be squirming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's when you're learning. Yep. Hey. And that's just. <laughs> <laughs> got little bars, little bars, little bars right there. <laughs> well, you know, it's the cannabis. <laughs> uh, exactly. It gets that creative flow going. Yes. I'm not going to uh, lie. Yes, yes. So we're beginning to wrap up. and I, I totally appreciate you. Thank you for being willing to come here. Thank you to Wanna Smoothie also um, for allowing us to hold this interview here. So one thing I normally do with uh, the phenomenal woman I had on my show is I allow them to have a megaphone to talk to society. Also, you're able to talk to men and give them a message. So what is the message that you want to leave with society and men? Hmm. This is a female plant. It's a female conversation. Mm, uh, that's a bar right? <laughs> <laughs> We really need to um, let women in this space. We need to let diversity in this space. Mm -hmm. We need to practice tolerance and work together to yes. achieve goals because your success is my success. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of bread for us all to eat. So let's get that bread. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So thank you for having me. I appreciate you, definitely. So can you please let the people know how they can contact you and then also read up on some of your great work? Okay. Um, definitely. I want people to visit my website. It's rxmaryjade.com. On there, you'll find, you know, links to a bunch of recommended products. I do like to make sure that people have access to safe, clean CBD products that actually work. Um, you know, it's not a medical recommendation by any means, but I just like to give people guidelines as to products that I use that have helped me and what I use them for so that they yeah. can kind of have an idea. But um, as you can see, she's very knowledgeable. Yeah, so, you know, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And uh, also on Instagram, because like I said, that's how I got started as a social media influencer. So you mm -hmm. can always see what kooky stuff I'm up to, what events I'm going to be doing, you know, little tidbits here and there, whistle blowing that might be happening with yeah, unsafe, yeah. clean <laughs> products. Like how we were talking about vapes and all that stuff. Um, so I just really try to have like a, a welcoming environment with that. So always feel free. You can contact me, send me an email, askrxmaryjade at gmail.com. I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> it's going to be at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll put that there. We'll put that there. Yeah. Askrxmaryjade at gmail.com. And you can always ask me a, any questions about CBD. If you have products, you can take a picture, you know. One or two, don't go crazy and send 20. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you have something uh, or you need help, you know, always feel free to reach out to me. I'm not going to charge you for an email. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure the people will appreciate this episode. Like I said, I was really looking for forward to this episode. So, okay. yes. I'm glad. All right. So, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Real Talk Session. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Talk session series, the revolution will be digitized. Sir, it's PC, folks, the revolution will be digitized.